Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, to a brand new episode of your favorite talk show, Bahrain. With me, Lara Sam'an, as we bring you the kingdom's latest topics and initiatives, as well as showcase local talents and more. All happening right here on Bahrain now, right after this break, so don't go away. Tonight in the studio, we have Hashim Al Ansari, who is the founder and managing director of HMA Group. Hashim acquired his success through many challenges, brave decisions, and hard work. Today, his company is a widely known name in the field of infrastructure in Bahrain and is part of a group known as HMA Group. To find out more, let's watch this report. Shore Mechanical was established in the year 2009 as a prime supplier of various assortments of products for the infrastructure and industrial sectors in Bahrain. InfoShore offers a wide range of engineering services and associated products that caters to the growing needs of the infrastructure and industrial markets worldwide, which led them to emerge as one of the leaders in the GCC market. Hope you guys enjoyed this report. Hello, Hisham, and welcome to our studio today. Thank you very much. So, Hisham, I know you started uh, 10 years back in your first job in a company in headquarters in Saudi Arabia. Can you tell us why you decided to leave this job and come back to Bahrain and open your own company? Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Lara, of course, for having me here and uh, for you for, and for your team, of course. And I hope that we have uh, a beneficial session for, uh, I'm sure for we the will. viewers. Um, uh, as regards to your question, actually, you know, if you have an accumulated knowledge of, uh, of a certain product and certain industry uh, of course when i'm saying knowledge i'm talking about the uh, competitors i'm talking about the uh, uh, marketplace market uh, um, price uh, the clients the specifications everything if that you need to know exactly about a certain product then uh, this might encourage you actually to go and, and establish your own uh, business plus that if you have a cert if you have an experience I mean, personal experience in, in, uh, in this kind of business. It's not just to, uh, to uh, read about it, it's just you, you have to practice it. Uh, I've been practicing this uh, for the past, I would say, 25 years. Okay, a long, long time. Uh, yes, exactly. And uh, plus that there is, there is also technology behind this product. So if you have all these accumulated, uh, then I think this will really be an uh, um, uh, encouraging factor for you to, uh, to go ahead with the with this uh, idea uh, of having a business, your own business. There is another thing which is very important, honestly, is I would always call it the, the Bahrain economy uh, uh, constitution, kind of a constitution, which is the 2030 uh, vision. vision of Bahrain. Yeah. Uh, there are three pillars. I, th I think anyone who wants to establish a business, he really needs to go and, and uh, read this uh, constitution or this, this book, I would say. Um, because there are three pillars or three uh, principles which are written there very clearly. It's the sustainability, the competitiveness, and the fairness. If you only take one pillar of this, which really uh, you will see, for example, the sustainability, uh, it's, it's uh, encouraging the private sector. Yeah. It's written actually clearly in that statement, which is uh, uh, the, the vision of Bahrain wants the private sector to lead the uh, the economic growth of Bahrain of course for they the coming to years expand, expand for the coming years exactly. and for the younger generations as well exactly exactly so you have the vision of the country plus you have the the other factors which you practice usually uh, and and certain industries so I think if you keep all these together uh, it's it's giving you really a leverage to to go and, and did, uh, did you it? just all of a sudden wake up one day and be like okay I want to leave my job and just start and open my own thing this is a very good question actually no i think i think really you need to to uh, uh, to select the right time okay to to do this it's, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be from day one 
as I said, you have to have an experience. And experience, by the way, uh, there is, there is, we have to differentiate between experience yes. and service. Because I get lots of uh, you know, candidates uh, for interview, and when I, when I interview them, uh, I ask them, how many years of experience do you have? They say, for example, 15 years. But when you, when you talk to him, it's a 15 years of service, not experience. Experience, yeah. yeah they didn't learn. So they they learned from it, but it's it's like you said, it's a service, not an experience. It's not like they went through challenges and different things to understand. It what exactly, they it to was do. a static knowledge. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a dynamic one. It wasn't. It was just a routine. Yeah, it's a routine way. job. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But if you have a dynamic one, if you have really accumulated, then then I think I think it will be. Uh, it will be a better ex experience. Of that's course, that's of how course, I said. definitely. Um, I would like to ask, what are the examples of government support for SMEs? SME private sectors in line with Bahrain 2030 vision that you think helped in developing your company? Well, I think there are a lot, honestly, and these are uh, a tangible things that we, we really uh, felt it. Myself, I, I, I felt it myself. I mean, we, we lived with it. Uh, there are so many packages. For example, you take Tamkin as an Tamkeen, example. Yeah. yeah, You have a couple of packages. If you're a beginner in, in, in the business, you have... Uh, um, the wages, they subsidize the wages, the full wages of Bahrainis, for example. Uh, they subsidize the, uh, your participation in exhibitions, the, all the IT systems. Uh, if you are industrial, for example, you have all the uh, machines, all, almost they subsidize. I they think almost subsidize, yeah, almost 50 or almost 70 percent Yeah, almost 50, as well, 50, 70 percent yeah. of it. So you have lots of, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, advantages from the country, I think, that, uh, that they put, and lots of efforts that they put uh, in this. You see it live. Plus, if you, if we feel now we are into the uh, the, uh, the middle of uh, I would say pandemic. Yeah, times, and even yeah? Temkin has been helping all of the the small businesses in Bahrain and the big businesses with this pandemic at the same time. Of course, and you have also the ca the country they they uh, contributed into uh, you know they put uh, a stimulus fund, and here we are talking about billions of dinars yeah. for either either for the SMEs for the small and medium enterprises or for the larger scale uh, units. Both, it was everybody. I yes, remember, yeah, I remember exactly. it was everybody, small, exactly. big, medium, whatever the enterprise was. You just submit. And Temkin would help you with exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you have also now the, the current one, which is, you know, the, the government in the, in the pandemic. The, ca the government, they subsidize the electricity bills, the, the, of the, all the, the offices. The electricity bills, the water bills. Some people as well helped with rents. Every, everybody was doing different things trying exactly, to help everyone. Exactly, exactly. Plus that they, they support with the loans, they support with the funds. It's almost, I would not say non-profitable loans, but it's a very, it's very slim margin. Yeah, it's really very, very uh, slim uh, interest rate. So, I mean, this really benefits and supports the, uh, the private sector, of yeah. course. Yeah. It, it supports private, uh, it supports everybody at the end of the day in exactly. the country. Exactly. Um, as well, I wanted to ask, you found and led your company into a leading infrastructure solutions provider today in the kingdom. Tell us, do you believe, is there some sort of pattern or formula in becoming a successful entrepreneur? Well, um, I think, I think yes, of course. Uh, as I said at the beginning, you have to have, you need, first of all, to uh, the, the, ob the main objective should not be just to establish a business. The main objective should be to, to make sure that the business will sustain. Yeah, and stay okay. running and stay open. Exactly. And uh, you, you need to make sure that you know, it will develop, it will uh, diversify, it will, uh, you will be able to expand uh, either, either regionally or, or even globally. So you need to select the right, the right product that will sustain all these challenges, yeah. all these, you know, uh, the, the competitive market. So uh, this is what I've done, honestly. Yeah, uh, I've selected certain products or a certain industry that you really can can uh, uh, contribute into the, uh, the the technology, or you can bring the technology. This is what I did. I brought it, for example, from uh, from Europe and from Saudi. I was in Saudi, as you know, for uh, uh, for uh, many years, for almost 15 years. Uh, we were dealing. I was exposed, honestly, to uh, lots of infrastructure technologies, which yeah, I, of course. Uh, when I came here, I mean back to Bahrain, I brought these all these technologies. Currently, for example, we just have finished a project in, um, in uh, Tubli, Tubli sewage treatment plant. It's a very prestigious uh, project that contributes, of course, into the environment. Uh, the the system that we use for the uh, for the pipeline, for example, which we were involved in. Yeah. It's uh, it's called the micro tunneling uh, um, or a jacking so pipe. So it's it's a new t it's a new technology now that it's we're a new technology using. and new product as well. Okay. This is the first ever uh, used uh, product in Bahrain. Okay. It's a fiberglass pipe. Uh, you know, the, it's a pipe that goes uh, uh, underground, like 20 meter uh, below ground, which uh, goes from point A to point, point B, B without interrupting 
anything on, on, on the ground. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, on the surface, there are lots of uh, facilities, buildings, roads. So it goes from point A to point B without interrupting so anything. And, okay. and the product is a fiberglass, and this is the first time uh, it comes into uh, to that's Bahrain. That's amazing. Hopefully yeah. now that we'll start that soon as well to help with the Tubli situation. Yeah, but hopefully, yeah, of course. That's, yeah, that's definitely, amazing. Definitely. Um, your company as well has a big contribution towards the previous and the current infrastructure projects in Bahrain. Tell us what made you to decide to be in this very tough industry. Honestly, for me, I don't think that there is a, a, a tough industry. Yeah, um, if if you are into this business, if you are into this uh, this field, then then should it sh shouldn't be you know it shouldn't be a tough, shouldn't be, uh, tough. It shouldn't be tough. Yeah, the only thing is that you need to be uh, uh, you, you need to base on a certain feasibility study, and this feasibility study, you need to write it. Uh, you know, most of the people here, with, or, or, or I would say some of the people, which w if they want to establish a business. They will uh, go and and uh, find a third party company and they give them and they do the feasibility study for, for they a do reason or another. Yes, correct. This should not be the case. You have to write the feasibility study. You have to uh, uh, initiate this, and uh, which 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 will base on your uh, of course experience and your knowledge and uh, only only then you will be able to uh, you know to contribute or to, to, uh, to establish. So you need to learn yourself, you need to do it, you need to know yourself. Even if you give it to a third party, third party person, I'd say you even, you yourself have to look into what the feasibility is, what, what you has to happen. Yeah, you have to provide the information. Yeah. They might write it for you. I mean, But you need to know what it is. Exactly, about. exactly. They will write, okay, the form of it, the, the format of the, of the feasibility, that's fine, that yeah. they will do it. But all the information uh, uh, should be initiated by you. Yeah, of uh, course. It has to come from your experience. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Only then you will be able really to establish a right, a right business. Yeah, I, I mm. completely agree with that. Like you need to know, you as a person need to know everything because you're establishing that business by yourself. You need to know from A to Z what you're doing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Is, That's true. is yeah. there anything else you'd like to add before we end the segment today? Uh, Actually, the only thing is that I would I would like to first uh, thank you, of course, yeah, yes. and and your Welcome team again studio. for for this. Uh, I hope that uh, that we we give some uh, good or beneficial uh, information to the uh, to the viewers. To the viewers and the young generation, they need to pay attention to all of these things for of the future, course. as they are the future of the 2030s that's coming up right definitely, now. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, Sham. That was very interesting. Appreciate it. Viewers, don't go away. We'll be right back for more. This month, the very first English monthly magazine in Bahrain that features a comprehensive guide to events and happenings in the kingdom. Have you guessed who our next guest is? George Militon, founder of Bahrain This Month. Such a pleasure to have you with us in the studio today. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. Welcome to our studio. So tell us about yourself and about your journey first. Well, journey in Bahrain started uh, about 42 years ago in 1979 when I first came to an island without even one highway. Um, <laughs> and now we have a million. <laughs> exactly, it was fantastic. No, uh, Bahrain, I first visited in 1977. Uh, my brother was working out here for a, a company called British Airways. And um, he obviously needed cheap labor when he went into his own business. Of course. So I, uh, I was the cheap labor that was brought in to- That he bought you in to exactly, help him? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so tell us, is it, it's true that you, got, you started the first English language monthly magazine in Bahrain back in September 1997. So that's in correct. those days, media was mostly print and on satellite broadcasts. Um, with the general decline of print worldwide, what have you done to maintain your magazine right now? Well, actually, content generation is the key to any successful media, whatever it was. Now, to do effective content in a magazine is much more difficult than it is to do online. Of course. So we've used our skills and experience from that side to basically migrate to the digital element. And, and we're now very strong in digital media, digital proliferation. We actually offer also consultancy services for companies that might be interested in the new technologies involved in advertising, which includes programmatic and uh, 
you know, interactive videos, personalized videos. So we're into the high echelons of the technology aspect of uh, media nowadays. Okay, so you've moved now from print almost to the company. Yeah, we still have print because we love it so much, but print is maybe 5% of our business. We're mostly digital. Digital. And uh, online. Okay, now. so now Bahrain this month is all, like mostly online now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, having said that, we printed in July. Uh, we'll be printing again, I think, in October. But How do you uh, feel about that since it's been print all these years and now like you've seen the change over the years going and going? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 an evolution. I mean, you know, never look back uh, and always look to, look to, to positive to aspects. Yeah. And, and again, the new technologies which are available really make, I mean, in the late, late 70s, when I got involved with the new technology of desktop publishing, before it was hot metal press, which was where people used to bang letters into those and have it printed out on a newspaper. Yeah. So uh, the new technology enabled us to get involved with desktop publishing. That was a very exciting technology and that enabled us to be able to do things which we wouldn't have been able to do if that technology hadn't been there. Carrying on now into uh, the, the latest project we're involved with is uh, interactive, um, uh, engaging uh, digital um, video which is personalised to, based on the information taken from the client's computer through an algorithm it makes it a personalised message. Oh that's and amazing. And it's that sort of thing. It's, 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 it's almost like watching an an episode of Black Mirror and being oh amazed wow. by, that's, by that's the new a, that's amazing. And what would you say people's feedback were like? What people? What was people's feedback from moving from printing to the behind this month going um, to online? I think people are very guarded. The trouble with uh, online is that everybody thinks it should be for free. That's and true. In order to actually <laughs> provide a quality service and to be able to compensate the people who do excellent jobs, it's so creative and experienced. You need to have that capability of, of being able to support them through being able to pay them properly etc and uh, it's it's a double-edged sword I mean uh, it's much easier to have online media now than ever before because anybody can anybody literally become can, a publisher yeah. but that experience expertise like anybody could be a photographer but we still employ professional photographers and filmmakers because that is a certain standard which you can't get by Correct. people you just can't just take a photo and with then a, with yeah a, with exactly an yeah, of course. And what would you say the challenges were with coming up with moving on to this new evolution that we have now? Um, well, it, it's, it's just the fact that you uh, people are perhaps unsure of where, uh, I suppose, things like privacy end. And, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of abuse online. You can get, I mean, Obviously, luckily, I'm 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 only world famous in Manama, not not not, not even in Bahrain. <laughs> so, uh, but people who are well known, um, as, as you know from the recent incidents with with uh, British footballers who missed penalties, who were abused terribly online, and yes, that sort of thing true. is is unfair and unwarranted. So, I think. That's so, no a major matter issue. what what you do anyway online, people will tend to abuse you no Absolutely. matter what. Because they find it an easy way and an easy platform to do it Absolutely. as well. Maybe you're speaking from experience. Yeah, yeah. It is. It comes. <laughs> it comes from. It comes from anything. Like no matter what you do. Yeah. yeah. So I can imagine that being <laughs> a big challenge. Um, how did you deal with it during the beginning of the pandemic? Uh, we had to completely redefine our business and what we were trying to do. I mean, um, up till that time, we had printed for since uh, September 1997 until up to and including April uh, 2020. We'd never stopped publishing one issue of either Bahrain This Month or Woman This Month magazines. All of a sudden, we just couldn't. I mean, people like uh, uh, Starbucks, who, who used to have magazines, stopped even taking magazines because of the possible possibility of contagion with, with, yeah, uh, with, corona. with people touching magazines. Yeah. So we actually had to slash, well, we, 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 we weren't able to print for about four or five months at that time. Okay. So, and then the digital element, it, it forces us to focus more on digital activities, which was a positive side. There's always a, a silver lining in every so cloud. Exactly, so there's always a silver lining somewhere. So you yeah. went completely like, because you weren't able to print, it's like, okay, now let's work yeah. on the digital and let's yeah. move, al move along. And thank goodness we've done it very successfully according to Thanks. many of our clients. So. Amazing. I mean, of course, you guys are one of the biggest, and like you said, the first in Bahrain. So I'm sure you have a lot of following yeah. that are coming from globally and Middle East and Bahrain itself. It's uh, yeah, it's a good. Uh, we've been sort of pioneering. Amazing, most of the time. amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we conclude the segment? No, just that obviously we've diversified into other areas of activity as well. We uh, represent um, 
company called City and Guilds, which is the largest vocational training company in Europe. We are working with Tan Keen to provide a new initiative to ensure that youngsters who are unemployed or just school leaving age will actually develop skills to be able to give them confidence to, to practical skills on yeah. vocational training. You don't have to be an academic or a doctor, but in Saudi we've trained people who are now um, uh, people who are relatively uneducated who were tra going through a training course that we have with a company called Americana. Uh, within three years they've become area managers for these oh, companies. Amazing. That's amazing. Being given skills which allow them to earn probably double what new newly qualified doctors in Saudi earn. Okay. So they're about 20,000 riyals uh, a month as opposed to 10,000 uh, 10, yeah. which is what uh, the, the other the that's the amazing other that's yeah, that's so a very nice initiative that they've come yeah, up yeah, with yeah. I yeah. that's really like I want to read about it next yeah, yeah it's yeah. really and, nice. and we also have a cake company this is if anybody can taste a better tasting cake than that I defy them in fact if you use the code word um, Papa G <laughs> TV <laughs> you will anybody listening will get 10% off any okay. of these cakes. I've Yalla cake, Janabir, they're yeah. amazing. Okay, so uh, ev everybody has to remember, thank you for that, <laughs> Papa G, you get 10% off. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. thank you for being with us in the studio thank today. Thank you very much indeed, Barry. Much appreciated. Viewers, don't go away, we'll be right back. we have reached the end of our episode i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did don't forget to send us your feedback via email or on our social media account shown below goodbye and god bless <laughs> <laughs>